So if you've been watching a lot of these gas videos, I bet you are so sick of hearing me say something over and over and over again. What is that? It's that we always have to use Kelvin temperatures when we're doing problems with gas. And granted, it is a pain to have to convert from Celsius or Fahrenheit into Kelvin temperatures. So why do we always have to use Kelvin temperatures for gas? We're going to talk about that here. Kelvin temperatures are really important because the Kelvin temperature scale relates directly to the amount of kinetic energy that particles in a gas sample have. Okay, so kinetic energy is just a fancy scientific word for the speed. And a gas sample is just a fancy scientific word for a bunch of gas that we have somewhere, all right? Maybe that's in a tank, a sample of gas. Maybe it's gas in a balloon, there's a sample of gas there, right? So Kelvin temperature di relates directly to the kinetic energy or the speed of the gas particles in a bunch of gas somewhere. So this kinetic energy and gas particle thing is something else that I talk about a lot when we're dealing with gases. And here's why. Gas particles, the atoms and molecules that make up a gas, are in constant random motion, right? They're like hyperactive three-year-olds, just like running all over the place, bouncing against the walls, hitting against each other, except unlike hyperactive three-year-olds, gas particles float and they're flying around in the air, bouncing into the walls and bouncing into each other, okay? This movement, this constant random motion is important because it's the gas particles banging into the side of a container that causes gas pressure, and it's also the gas particles banging into the side of a container, something like a balloon, that's what makes that gas um, uh, take up volume. So if we had something like an aerosol can, and we could slice it in half and then blow up the insides millions and millions of times, we'd see that there are all of these gas particles that make it up, and I've only drawn, drawn a few of them, but there'd be billions and billions, and they'd all be flying around really fast, and that's what these arrows represent. And it's the collisions of these gas particles against the side of this container that's what, what caused the gas pressure inside this container. And similarly with a balloon, it's filled with these gas particles in constant random motion. When they bang against the inside of the balloon, that's what inflates it. It's what gives it volume and keeps its shape. So the kinetic energy, uh, the speed of the gas particles moving around, relates directly to the pressure and the volume of gas samples. And as you may remember, the higher the temperature, the faster these guys fly around. So if we said that the higher the temperature, the faster they move, why is Kelvin temperature, as opposed to just like Celsius or Fahrenheit, why is Kelvin temperature special? Let's take a look at a graph to try to explain why this is the case. So here we have a graph, and on the bottom is temperature. It goes from 0 to 500, so it's increasing in this direction. This is Kelvin temperature, that's the K. And on this axis is kinetic energy, the speed that gas particles in a sample of gas are moving. So the higher we go up here in kinetic energy, the faster our gas particles are moving. Okay, so for a gas, for a sample of gas, maybe like gas in a balloon or something, let's look at the relationship between temperature and kinetic energy. So what happens when we increase the temperature of this gas sample? We get a line that looks like this. There are a few things that I want you to recognize about the line. First of all, as temperature increases, so does kinetic energy. That's what the line tells us, but we knew that to begin with. The most important thing, though, is where this line begins, okay? This is saying that at a temperature of zero Kelvin, particles of gas have zero kinetic energy. That's one of the things that makes Kelvin temperatures so important. And that's what I meant when I said that the temperature is tied directly to the kinetic energy. When the Kelvin temperature is zero, the kinetic energy is absolute zero. The molecules are not moving at all, okay? Here's the other important thing. Take a look at the slope of this line. It's a slope of one, and here's what that means. It means that when I double the temperature, I double the kinetic energy. Let me show you here. Let's say that I am at a temperature of 100 Kelvin. I'm gonna go up here in our graph, 
and then we can go over here to see what the kinetic energy is. So it's from here to here is a kinetic energy when we're at 100 Kelvin. Let's look at the kinetic energy when we're at 200 Kelvin. I'll go from 200 Kelvin up here to my line, and then I'm going to go across. And you can see just graphically that in going from 100 Kelvin to 200 Kelvin, I've gone and doubled the amount of kinetic energy that my gas particles have. Okay? So this is important because, as we said earlier, kinetic energy relates directly to pressure and to volume. So check this out. If I have a sample of gas that's like in a fixed container, fixed volume, and I double the Kelvin temperature from 100 Kelvin to 200 Kelvin, we already said that it's going to double the amount of kinetic energy in that sample. What that's going to do is it's going to double the pressure. So we double the temperature and we double the pressure. We go from 5 atm to 10 atm in this example. And that's because since the kinetic energy is twice as high, these guys are moving twice as fast, so they're banging into the sides of the container twice as hard, and that causes twice the pressure because of that force from the extra speed. So we can say twice the Kelvin temperature, twice the pressure. That's why Kelvin temperature is important. Let's look at this. The same thing goes with a balloon. If we take the Kelvin temperature from 250 to 500 Kelvin, we double it. We double the amount of kinetic energy that all these particles have. And what that's going to do is it's going to double the volume of the balloon. And again, that's because with twice the kinetic energy, these guys are moving twice as fast. They're banging into the side of the balloon twice as hard. And since the balloon is flexible and can move, it's going to be pushed out twice as much because of that increased force. So that's one of the reasons why Kelvin temperature is so important. And it's not just doubling. I can triple, I can quadruple, I can multiply it by 6 or by 8. And if I multiply the temperature by 4, I'm going to multiply either my pressure by 4 or my volume by 4. Because kinetic energy and pressure or volume and temperature in Kelvin are all tied together really closely. Okay, So that's why Kelvin temperature is special because it relates directly to the kinetic energy, the speed that these gas particles have. So the last question that I often get is, okay, so why is Kelvin temperature any different than Fahrenheit or Celsius? This is one of the reasons that zero Kelvin means zero kinetic energy. Let's take a look at what a Celsius temperature change would look like. Zero Celsius doesn't have anything to do with the kinetic energy of gas. Instead, zero Celsius is where water freezes. So water freezes at about 273 Kelvin, which would be about here. So I'm going to mark this as zero degrees Celsius. Okay, And that means that this is going to be about 100 degrees Celsius. And then right about here is 200 degrees Celsius. Okay, now. Let's look at what happens when I double the Celsius temperature from 100 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius. I can go right up here on my graph and then move over to find out what the kinetic energy at this temperature is going to be. Ah, my line's a little bit wavy, but you get the idea. And now I'll go from 100 to 200, go on up here, and now move across. Check this out. Although I've doubled the Celsius temperature, I haven't doubled the amount of kinetic energy that the gas particles have. This is what it was at 100 degrees Celsius. In order to be doubled, it would have to be like way up here, even like beyond the screen. So when I double the Celsius temperature or the Fahrenheit temperature, it's the same thing, I don't double the amount of kinetic energy in my gas particles, which means that I also don't double the pressure or the volume. And that's all because both Fahrenheit and Celsius, their zero doesn't begin at zero kinetic energy. It begins in the middle of the scale. So just to review everything that we talked about, Kelvin temperatures are important because they relate directly to the amount of kinetic energy that something has. If we double the Kelvin temperature or triple it or quadruple it or whatever, we do the same thing to the amount of kinetic energy, which means that we double or triple or quadruple the pressure or the volume of our sample of gas. 
Celsius and Fahrenheit temperatures are different. Because they don't start at zero, if you double the Celsius or Fahrenheit temperature, it doesn't double the amount of kinetic energy. So these numbers don't work well for problems involving pressure and volume. So that, even though it's a pain, I know it's a pain, that is why we always have to use Kelvin temperatures when we're dealing with problems involving gases. Oh wait, and there's one more thing that I want to say, and that's that zero Kelvin is referred to as absolute zero. And if you're interested in learning more about absolute zero and how um, the Kelvin temperature scale was discovered, check out uh, my video on absolute zero.